When legally cautious UN experts draw on the lexicon of Srebrenica, Darfur and Rwanda to describe what they call the gravest of crimes, you get pretty much straight away the enormity of what started in Rakhine State, Myanmar, exactly one year ago. Over the weekend, some of the 700,000 Rohingya Muslims who fled demanded justice on this grim anniversary. Today, they heard an independent UN fact-finding mission demand that the Myanmar military commanders responsible for their plight be investigated and prosecuted for genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes. We were seven, but only I got out. Everyone in the house was burned alive. My three daughters, my two sons and my husband. The UN team said estimates that the military's scorched earth tactics have led to 10,000 deaths are conservative. The military's contempt for human life, dignity and freedom, for international law in general, should be a cause of concern for the entire population of Myanmar and to the international community as a whole. Accountability can only take place if the single most a significant factor is addressed, and that is the role of the Commander-in-Chief, Min Aung Lee. And the only way forward is to call for his resignation and stepping down immediately. This is General Min Aung Hlaing. This weekend, he got back from a shopping trip to Russia, buying guns at an arms fair. He, his deputy, and four other senior commanders stand accused of masterminding what the UN's already branded textbook ethnic cleansing. Resignation? Probably not on the cards. And why not? Because the military runs things in Myanmar. They're above the law. It's been like that for 55 years, and the quasi-civilian regime, fronted by Aung San Suu Kyi, hasn't changed that. Today, the Nobel Peace Laureate was upbraided by the UN fact-finding team for her failure to use her moral authority to prevent what happened in Rakhine. The UN expert's remit was to examine allegations of human rights violations going back to 2011 and covering other ethnic conflicts too, including in Shan and Kachin states, whose ethnic minorities have endured the same pattern of persecution as the Rohingya of Rakhine which they described as a catastrophe looming for decades. The tactics employed by the army, they said, include burning whole villages, murder, imprisonment, enforced disappearance, torture, the assaulting of children and sexual violence. The scale, brutality and systematic nature of rape and violence indicate that they are part of a deliberate strategy to intimidate, terrorize or punish the civilian population. They are used as a tactic of war. Children, too, suffered grave violations, including killing and maiming, sexual violence, abduction and detention, especially girls. Over the months, Channel 4 News has documented these terrible crimes. Many babies are now being born in refugee camps as a result of rape. This woman spoke to us about how she was gang raped by soldiers. <laughs> She told us about how women were repeatedly raped and then had their throats slit. We met children who'd survived being shot, like 12-year-old Janat Ara, who'd seen her father and brother shot dead in front of her too. The Myanmar government has yet to comment on the report. It's the UN's most strident condemnation so far, but whether the accused will ever end up on the dock is a question only the UN itself can now answer. Well, earlier, I spoke to Christopher Sadotti, a member of the UN's independent fact-finding mission on Myanmar, which produced that report. And I began by asking him to outline the range of atrocities he discovered. Perhaps the, the saddest thing I can say is that the range covered the full gamut of international human rights violations and the most serious crimes under international law. Uh, the, the, the violations themselves from very large numbers of killings uh, mostly indiscriminate killings, many clearly targeted at civilians, uh, torture, arrest and detention, uh, mass rape, uh, mass rape on a scale that is rarely seen in other, in other places, 
Um, we have seen children being targeted, women being targeted. What did you make of the UK response today? They were saying that uh, they're discussing options for bringing the report before the Security Council. Was that a bit muted? Was that sufficiently robust? Has the UK government been sufficiently robust against Myanmar in the past? The United Kingdom is the president of the Security Council this month, but there are only a few days left this month. It would be good if the United Kingdom could take an initiative during the course of its pre uh, presidency. Uh, there will be a discussion in the Security Council tomorrow, we understand. That's an opportunity to start the work of building a consensus within the Security Council for some serious response. Aung San Suu Kyi, you talk about the moral authority she represents. Should she not bear some responsibility? Should you not press charges against her also? Our report indicates that the civilian authorities in Myanmar contributed to the atrocities that have been committed. We certainly found no evidence that they were involved in the planning or in the implementation of the operation, but they did contribute, uh, apart from anything else. Uh, the blanket denials, some of the statements that were made while these operations were continuing, contributed and the civilian authorities generally contributed to what has occurred through silence, but also through, through misleading comments you know, misleading comments that say that this is all fake, that fake rape, I mean, a most offensive statement directed towards the women, hundreds of whom we interviewed who had been raped. It's interesting that, that you know, the suggestion that genocide charges should be applied to Aung San Suu Kyi herself, uh, you've stepped back from that. Some people might be puzzled yes, why that was. We works. have, um, because, as I say, she is not in effective control. Um, she was not involved in the planning and implementation of the operation. Her role was very much a secondary role to that of the military. And we would, we would rather not be distracted from laying the blame where it principally lies. And that's, that's with the Commander-in-Chief, uh, Senior General Min On Lain, his Deputy, Vice Senior General So Win, and the top military commanders. Let's start from the top of the military hierarchy and work our way down if we're going to see any significant change in the human rights situation in Myanmar. How confident can the families of those who've lost their loved ones be that they're going to get justice? They can be confident, at least, that the truth is now being told. And we consider that our, our very first obligation as a fact-finding mission. The victims and the survivors are entitled to the truth, and the people of Myanmar as a whole are entitled to the truth. But justice in terms of holding individuals accountable, I hope that will come. Chris Sidotti, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, tonight, the Foreign Office has said the findings should be put before the United Nations Security Council next month. And the Foreign Secretary, Jeremy Hunt, has promised to visit Myanmar at the earliest opportunity. And I'm joined now from New York by Karen Pierce, who is the UK's ambassador to the United Nations. Karen Pierce, why shouldn't this be discussed in detail by the Security Council this week when it meets? Well, the Security Council has a session later this week uh, which the Brits are chairing, and I'm sure that this report will be mentioned. What came out today was a summary. The full report goes to the Human Rights Council in Geneva in September, and then I think it will come back to the Security Council. But the issues it addresses, as we just heard, are incredibly serious about some of the worst crimes it's possible to commit, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of focus on that in New York before there's a full and proper formal debate. Well, given the seriousness of the allegations, are you confident that the Security Council might unanimously back referral to the ICC and that you will therefore have a gen genuine prospect of getting some of these military chiefs in the dock? Uh, I'm sorry to say I'm not confident of that. To date, Russia and China have taken a different view of ICC referral, and without acceptance by them of a referral, uh, then I'm afraid it will be very difficult for the Security Council to take that step. We will talk to them, we will talk to our allies and partners uh, about what can be done. There's also a Burmese domestic commission of inquiry that is led by independent international members. In many ways, to be able to have a Burmese inquiry, were it to be credible, uh, would help bring domestic acceptability and accountability. But the key thing there, of course, is that it would have to be credible. And take us inside the room, if you will. If you had your Russian and Chinese colleagues in front of you now, what would you say to them to persuade them to endorse a referral to the ICC? 
Uh, well, I've seen these sorts of crimes before, very sadly, in, in Srebrenica. Uh, and I, th I was on the, fact, fact, the um, original Security Council mission uh, to Burma and Bangladesh earlier this year. And I think whenever you see something like that, you're always reminded that the international community says never again uh, when it comes again across crimes against humanity. Uh, and here we are. It has happened again. So I would want the Russians and Chinese to talk to us about what was in the overall interests of Burma's future as a more democratic, more prosperous country uh, and try and take them forward on those lines. Uh, but I have to say at the moment, uh, we are not very hopeful. And it, the report doesn't suggest that Aung San Suu Kyi should herself face charges. Do you, are you surprised by that? Do you think that she's been let off the hook somewhat? Uh, I'm not surprised by it. And, and the fact-finding mission report that came out today is, if you like, a preliminary uh, report. It makes recommendations. It isn't an investigation or a judicial uh, report itself. Uh, I think we would certainly think that Aung San Suu Kyi has not been as bold or as firm as she could have been about what has happened uh, in Burma and to the Rohingya. But I do agree with Chris Sadotti in the report. The responsibility does not primarily lie with the Burmese government, but with the Burmese military. And it is their role that needs a proper judicial investigation yeah. and accountability mechanism. I mean, just very briefly, Jeremy Hunt has pledged to go to Myanmar and, you know, for himself, see for himself. What can that achieve? Uh, well, I think he'll be able to talk to the Burmese government about accountability and about getting the refugees uh, back home to their livelihoods uh, and their villages. I think the real test of whether there is domestic acceptance in Burma and whether there's accountability is if the refugees feel comfortable uh, going home. And we will support the UN in trying to bring that about. And that means pressing the Burmese government to give the UN the best possible access so that they can deliver a plan and start getting some of these poor refugees home.